Josh Davidson, SEIU 10 to 1 and SFUSD. And why don't you talk about why you're here today, the issues that concern you about uh, the service employees, the people who work in the school district. So we represent clerks, custodians, uh, cafeteria workers in the school district, and we, we share a civil service system with the city of San Francisco, but our workers in the school district make between 15 and 18 percent less than people with the same job in the city. And our folks overwhelmingly have kids in the schools, a lot of us live in San Francisco and we're trying to make it by here and having such a significant pay difference between us and the city makes it really hard for anybody to do, you know, to live their life. And how are your members surviving in San Francisco with the rents and, and everything else? Well, I'll tell you what, barely. I'm sharing a studio apartment. So that's, uh, that's kind of the story. I'm one of the few that like moved in recently and has managed to like cling to the city. A lot of our folks have Either they they inherited a home, or they you know are looking at moving out. Basically, like that's the that's the real story these days. And uh, the school district, do they have the money? I mean, why aren't they paying the same for workers in the schools as they do who work in the city? So we've asked for a phase in that we think would cost the school district about two million dollars a year, maybe a bit less. Uh, the school district's budget every year is over six hundred million dollars, and frankly, the city is rich. The city could kick in some money. The city routinely gives the school district money that they just put in the bank in a reserve fund and don't actually use for students, don't use for programs, don't use for staff. Uh, you know, if we all work together to get Prop 30 passed this year, the extension for the millionaire's tax, there's going to be plenty of money to go around. And we're, not, we're actually, in our proposal, we say, if the district's in deficit, we can put off the phase in. So we're not asking for all the money up front. And we're respectful of the idea that if the, the students need the money first, and only if we're in surplus are we in a situation where we're looking for a raise, right? We, we care about the kids. I mean, there are over 30 billionaires in San Francisco. Why is it that people can't survive here when they have regular jobs? Yeah, well, you know, I honestly think that's part of it. We have more billionaires per capita than any other city in the world. San Francisco is the home of the billionaire. And it's ridiculous that, like, I can't go into Van Ness Station without walking through someone's urine. And yet, you know, like they're building these giant shining skyscrapers for people to use to store their money that they stole from Russia and China and Korea, right? Like, they, they need to use that money to hire workers to do the work that will benefit all the citizens of the city. And that work is the very unglamorous, basic day-to-day -day work of organizing the offices, cleaning the floors, feeding the kids. It's, it's the work that get, makes the whole society spin, you know? And are you concerned about the growing rise of charters in San Francisco and around the country? It's ridiculous. We have public agencies proposing charter schools in San Francisco. It's completely unconscionable. What do you mean public ages? So, like the Exploratorium, for instance, which is a publicly, fun I mean, it's a nonprofit, but it's publicly funded. They are establishing a charter school in San Francisco rather than working with the public school district to educate our kids in science, which they're very good at. They have a lot of expertise in. Why aren't they using that expertise to educate our public school children instead of setting up a school that's exclusive for only select kids? You know, everybody needs science education. So is this out of control? It's completely out of control. There's, and it's hard to even see how it's gonna stop, but it has to stop. There just isn't a way to have fair quality education for all of our kids in San Francisco if we keep cutting them off into these little enclaves of charter schools and there's there's no respect for the workers in these schools. There's no- they, Do they oppose unionization of these schools? Oh, I mean, that's the whole point of charter schools is to oppose unionization. Like, we, San Francisco Unified does experiment with teaching uh, strategies in its own schools. We innovate all the time internally. We don't need a private company to come up and set up in their own shop just to try out new strategies. We are always doing that. San Francisco learns as we teach our kids 
charter schools are only about cutting down the standards for our workers and for our families in the schools. They want people working for free, the parents or the students, doing your jobs, is that the plan? Oh, that's the ideal charter employee, is someone who comes in and works for free, right? They, you know, like, we, we have schools where Luckily, most of, our, most of the charter schools use our own cafeteria workers, but like parents are taking out the trash, answering the phones, handling the compliance paperwork. I mean, this is not a good idea, right? This work needs to be done by professionals who are skilled in their work and not just, hey, let's, let's take a volunteer and then when something really complicated comes up, we'll all ask the school district if they can just send somebody over for the day for free. I mean, that's, our own workers end up effectively volunteering for the charter schools to do things like safety compliance because they don't want to pay and so there's no one to do the work. Sounds like a rigged system. Uh, there's no other way to describe it. Okay, thank you. And what can people do who want to support your efforts here? Call the school board, call your school principals, and tell them workers in San Francisco schools deserve fair wages just like workers at the city of San Francisco. Janine Butler. I'm here to support all of my classifications for the unified school district for equal rights, equal pay. It means uh, if it's not classified, nobody does the work. What's your name? Enrique. My name's Ryan, and I'm just here as a shop steward and uh, SEIU labor representative, kind of helping gather our workers, help bring parity to um, school district workers because we serve the students. And um, what we're doing is we're losing a lot of members because of the uh, the changing conditions in housing in San Francisco. People can't cross the bridge to earn 18% less uh, uh, across city wages. So what they're doing is they're either opting for jobs with the city or being pushed out altogether. And we need to bring these protections back to working folks. And how is that affecting the schools when you can't get workers to do the jobs? Well, I think uh, the, uh, the, the district's value in their workers is directly affected in the conditions. When you think a custodian is worth 18% less, what you're saying is that you're content with kids going to school in uh, dirty classrooms. You're content with schools not having the workers they need to serve their lunches. You're content with your be teachers being paid late because clerks run the desks. We're at CIU. Um, and what we're trying to do is just build fair uh, circumstances for our workers so we can have a more collaborative relationship and build a better school district. And what do you think about the charter schools? Uh, the charter schools should be on the city payroll they have they should have value their students at least as much as the public schools of san francisco they're going to get access to the best talent if they start to unionize their labor force because what that means is not only protections for their workers but it means standards of quality and that's what we bring with that ciu uh, standard are they opposing unionization at the charter that's what i've heard uh i have unfortunately not been staying up on the news. I've been focused on our own contract negotiations. But the more I hear about the charter schools uh, taking workers for you know the lowest dollar possible, it shows what they want to invest in their students the little as possible for their um, you know other salaries. It doesn't go to the kids. Mark Bradshaw. I've been with the school district for 35 years, and we're here today mostly to speak about wage parity. Um, about seven or eight years ago, we had some negotiations where we took a lot of pay freezes to help the district out, balance their budget, only to find out later that it's been suspected that they may have actually um, hid funds. So, so this shouldn't even be a, a point. We shouldn't even be doing this. It should have already been taken care of a long time ago. So for us to the rest of the city gets paid 15 to 18 percent more than we do, so they're having a hard time retaining employees or getting them of quality. So it's not just the SEIU, but all the other trades too. What's the conditions in the schools if you can't keep the workers? <laughs> well, that's kind of funny because without workers, they're going to fall apart right away. And you can try to get volunteers. That'll work for a couple of weekends, and that'll drop off. The quality will be down. So it's without. This is the backbone. Without this, it falls down. 